Okay, good, good afternoon. I'll go ahead and call the uh, meeting of the House Higher Education uh, Committee to order. And thank everyone for coming. Thank everyone for uh, attending virtually. Um, bear with us today. It was uh, the, the last meeting was the first time I chaired a meeting in person, but did it virtually. It was much easier to do the entire virtual thing this summer when I saw everybody on the screen. So I brought my screen. So now I can see people. And now that's even more disconcerting because I see me happening with a two second delay. So uh, it, it's uh, if I stutter and stammer around, I apologize um, as we do that. Um, I'm going to uh, take care of a couple of things. But before we do that, just out of an abundance of caution, as we're learning these virtual things, uh, I don't suspect we, we have a controversial uh, item before us today, but um, we're going to go ahead and start the policy of uh, doing a roll call so that we, we make note of all those that are with us virtually. So if there's a vote later, we'll know we're also going to do that by roll call again, just so that we make sure that the, the folks that are on virtually are, are just uh, has, have just as much say and just as much count as, as those in the room. So I'm going to turn it over at this time, except you don't need, can you get a microphone toward you, Ms. George? And you are press the button down there because I don't know where. Okay, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Courtney George, and she's going to call the roll for us. Can we call everybody, or just the people um, online? Yeah, just go down. With, just call all the names. And we'll... Representative Earnhardt. Here. Representative Patty Bentley. Yes. Representative Rhonda Bruno. Here. Representative Casey Carpenter. Here. Representative Jasmine Clark. Here. Representative Katie Dempsey. Here. Representative Robert Dickey. Representative David Dreyer. Here. Representative Matt Dubnick. Present. Representative Scott Holcomb. Representative Betsy Holland. Here. Representative Rick Jaspers. Representative Angelica Kosh. Here. Representative Trey Kelly. Representative David Knight. Representative Karen Mathiak. Here. Representative Marie Metz. Representative Sam Park. Here. Representative Clay Perkle. Here. Representative Burt Reeves. Representative Calvin Smyrie. Representative Dell Washburn. Representative Marcus Rudawi, Rudauer. Representative Rick Williams. Here. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for doing it. Oh, that's not going to work at all. Let me turn my and that, that the only thing worse than seeing yourself two minutes, uh, two seconds in delay is hearing yourself two, two seconds in delay. So we have that turned down. Um, I would take a couple of things uh, before we get to the bill, just uh, uh, administratively good of the order, if you will. Um, we, we are operating in a little bit of a different environment this year uh, since we're on the floor. We're in the gallery. We're in 341. Um, we're going to take the posture on committee notices. We're going to try to do those by email unless you wish to have a paper copy sent to you. If you want to do that, send a note to Sarah Gallion. She's over there, but I can't see her, but I'm, I'm, she's behind that post in our office. Send a note to Sarah and where you would like it delivered. That would be to your place on the floor, to your place in 341 or to your place in the gallery or to your office. If you wish one, we wish you to have one, but we also know many times those go straight in the trash and especially, you know, since they would be handled and they're just something else that, you know, a germ, you know, the virus could be on. We, we've, we've been good, good luck with that, but we're going to go electronic with the notices and, and doing, uh, doing that. Uh, along those lines, you should have gotten in this notice, uh, Ms. Gallian, am I correct? They should have gotten a copy of House Bill 152 no they didn't do that so you will get that after this meeting it is a measure by representative weed hour that we passed last year um that, that take a look at that as we approach next week's meeting that's a non-fiscal item we have some other bills in the committee but they are we're awaiting fiscal notes so take a look at that electronically and again if you wish anything hard copy let us know we want we wish to be open and honest but we're uh uh, we're going to be as electronic as we can uh, because we're all spread out and because that uh, I believe is good, uh, good practices. With that, uh, I, I will be presenting uh, House Bill 67 
if uh, the acting chair calls upon me here in a second. And, and at this time, I will at, uh, at this time turn it over to uh, the vice chairman of the higher ed committee, uh, Representative Earhart, for her to conduct uh, the meeting and, and uh, call on me to present House Bill 67 if she so chooses. I'm really hopeful. Right here. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, happy to be here. Uh, the chair now calls upon our uh, esteemed chairman, uh, Chairman Martin, to present House Bill 67. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I come to you today on House Bill 67. Some of you that have been on the committee, can everybody hear okay with the mask? Okay, I'm, I'm fine with that. If I get short of breath because uh, you know I'm out of shape and, and the mask is on, I might have to step back for a second. Uh, House Bill 67 um, it seeks to allow the university system and the technical college system of Georgia to carry forward funds and to write, you know, so-called write-off on collectibles. You have a sheet in uh, in your packet. Let me make note of that. That. Part one carry forward funds is actually part two in the bill and part two write off is actually part one in the bill when you're actually uh, reading the part as part one is on line nine of the bill that is spoken to on your fact sheet. Um, part one is, is write off of uncollectible um, part uh, two of the bill is described in part one of the sheet. Did I confuse that? I know everybody Good with that. Well, with that, what I'd like to do is do a brief presentation. I am going to pull this away just a little bit so I, I feel like I can project better. Um, a big brief presentation uh, on this is, and then I have uh, representatives from TCSG and uh, the University System of Georgia that can answer questions. But what this does is provide the Technical College System of Georgia and TCSG with some budgeting predictability. Um, the first thing I will say is with the um, I don't like the term write-off, but that's what it is. These funds have become uncollectible. And what this bill allows them to do is move them into a category whereby they don't count on that revenue for their budgeting going forward. It does not mean we will not try to get the funds if that student comes back to a college that, that we walk away from those funds. But it, it would be like running a business. If you have an uncollectible amount, you don't count on that making payroll next week, right? You put that over in an uncollectible account. This is similar to what that what that does for, for these funds and allows them to budget accordingly. So they don't count on revenue they can't get in the short term. The second part of the bill, which is again is described in part one of your sheet, is the carry forward funds. And this allows uh, certain defined funds uh, as enumerated with tuition and direct uh, forward technology fees and, and, and others, departmental sales and service to be carried forward into the, um, into the next fiscal year. Uh, tuition specifically in the university system up to 3% of the annual tuition revenue, up to 15% in the technical college system. This also allows them to span um, Fiscal years, quite frankly, if, if we didn't, you know, allow that, some money might not be spent in the, in the best way to, to best deploy it and serve the citizens and the students in the technical college system and the university system. So this allows our systems who are, who are doing great work and, and have to go through things, you know, you hate to, to mention it, but just COVID is a perfect example that being able to do that last year helped them pivot and use those monies to go more online for that specific uh, emergent need. So with that, I'll be glad to answer your questions. There's four places in the bill uh, where we're extending the sunset date um, from 2021 to 2026. There's one particular place on page four where the date, um, the dates are changed actually from June 30 to July 1. That is just to properly align with the fiscal fiscal years of the state um and that's just the proper 
proper way to do it. And we, we hope it'll, it'll continue to be extended, but should it not, we don't want it to end on June 30th because that would be before the fiscal end. So it would actually cut them off a, a year ahead of what they intended. With that, I would stand for questions um, and um, have colleagues here from the university system and TCSG. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I believe you do have two questions. Uh, who was number seven? Number seven. Are you are you number seven? You're, you're, we you're, gotta you're look seven, at the, um, rest look of on your paper. The, uh, your paper is your mic number now. They just did that to make things simple okay. for everybody. Thank, thank you, thank no. you, Madam Chair. Uh, so, so Chairman Martin, thank you for your leadership and for the bill. Uh, the one question uh, or point of clarification I just wanted to make is, you know, we're not creating any new law. This is simply an extension of existing law. Is that not true? A a absolutely. If if one looks, the only strike, you know, as we review bills strike through and underlines is where you see change the only thing you see is uh, the date struck uh, stricken and, and a new date put in that is absolutely correct thank you chairman okay thank you and uh number two is that representative bentley yeah yes thank you madam chair um mr chairman thank you too for your work on this legislation um but maybe this is a question for the university system but uh, but i'm going to ask Exactly. Can you give me an example of exactly how this is going to impact Fort Valley State University? I'll, I'll call on the university system to do that. Okay. I, I would say this as, as she prepares to, to come up that all the, all the university system components that, that I have spoken to about it, and I have not spoken to all 26, okay. but all the ones I've spoken to um, express real support for it because okay. it allows them flexibility now again with the chair's permission i, I would uh, defer to okay. the university system to give a more in-depth answer for thank that. you sir i just yeah. want to get a, get a detailed example of how this is going to impact fort valley good afternoon yes um to, to chairman martin's point each institution has the ability i'll, I'll speak specifically to, to the tuition carry forward um, allowing uh, Fort Valley or any of our institutions to care for those funds helps them really to, to be more strategic in the way they plan to set themselves up. If, if there's any unforeseen circumstances, COVID, you know, is a perfect example, but, you know, declining enrollment, things that really have an impact on your current year revenues, having this bridge funding really provides an opportunity as they move into the next fiscal year to realign priorities and gives them a, a, some time and funding at the same time to, 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 to kind of do a reset. So it's, it's really a lot, you can, you can think of it as bridge funding that helps for unforeseen circumstances. Yeah. Madam Chair, if I may just to, to follow up with that, and I think we answered the Secretary of the Committee's questions, but to, to, to further do that, we, we lag, you know, with appropriations here, we lag between a year and two years on our formula funding. So if you have a growth institution, this also helps in letting them keep the additional revenues. Is that not true? So with, with the lag, sometimes when, when institutions are growing, um, they wouldn't get that put into their formula for maybe a, a year or two college years later. So this allows them to take advantage of that at 3% uh, of the overall tuition. I, I think, yeah, uh, Madam Secretary, I think you can uh, tell them they'll, or you tell them about it, I believe you'll, you'll, you'll find they're, they're very happy with it. And I appreciate your co-sponsor co with us on the bill along with Chairman Smyers. So I appreciate that very much. Thank you, Chairman. I think you have one question. Sure. Right yeah, it, it may be um, for the uh, university system. How was it done before this bill? Was there, what was it, was there no provision at all before this bill, uh, the original bill a long time ago? Hey, again, I'll defer to, to the sure. specifics, but my, my recollection but before the, the they weren't able to carry for the money. And we, we had, I think it was in this very room in 606, several chancellors ago, and there were questions asked about monies left over and, and through the budgeting process. And, and quite frankly, depending upon the, the operation of the university, if, if they had to return it, they would in many cases buy things they thought they would need, but in some cases it wouldn't be what they needed. So it, it, Universities don't like to spend money back when they send money back when they think they have needs for it in the future. And now I, I'm probably I'm, I'm going to say that because I think university the representatives from the university system would probably never say that about their president. But I think in reality, they're 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 not want to, to give the money back if they know they're going to have a need next year. So they guess what that need was going to be. And, and they hit it a lot of times, but many times they don't. So we wanted to give them flexibility. And, and I yield to the, the lady again, if the chair allows. 
Yeah, no, I think that's the, that's exactly right. I, I think having the carry forward, pre-carry forward, to, to Chairman Martin's point, we had to think about needs in the future. It was almost impossible to deal with multi-year planning, right? Because you have to start from the ground zero again um, from a funding perspective. So having this allows us to be much more strategic and really um, plan for multi-year um, initiatives. So it's been very helpful. Sure. And I think it, 2003, if I'm not mistaken, is when this went into effect. Okay, just a follow up. So to me, you know, I'm new guy on the committee, but I, I would think that that 3% number would be low. Um, you know, as you know, as you deal, like uh, Representative Martin said, or Chairman Martin said, you know, it's for a growing institutions it's important to be able to roll it over. But I would also think for a declining organization, it would be important because you're able to to smooth that that decline out, just like you're smoothing the growth out, like peanut butter. So, I mean, just as we, not not to railroad a bill, but I would like to talk about it long term of what, you know, what is actually, is 3% a right number, is 5% a right number, and what all that looks like, because I would think three would be low, but um, like I said, I just, first guy, first new guy on the committee, so. Thank you, and we'll work with you on that as well. Oh, Chair, and I believe we do have an online question. Uh, Representative Clark, did you have a question? Can you um, hear me? Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Yes, I had a question, but it was actually just answered oh, just, by the previous. Just a question. second, we can't quite hear you. We have to turn the mic up on my. There we go. Try again. Uh, I was saying, um, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I did um, have a question, but it was answered by the previous uh, question, so I, I wave. Okay. We wave at you. <laughs> uh, Madam Chair, if, if I might to, to go. Um, to Representative Carpenter's question about the, the amounts. I think one of the things is um, you're certainly in a high growth area. There, there is mo more money, but I think if my recollection is those, those numbers came about because you know, in the university system, there was, there was more of a level um, uh, tuition growth and, and they very seldom miss it by more, like in, in TCSD, it's at 15% you could carry forward, but you, you really don't find yourself in university system components that are traditionally a little bit bigger than some of the technical colleges, you don't find them, you don't, you don't find the delta in the budget between what's spent and what's left over to be that large. But that, that you make, you make a good point. If this is good to do, if we're finding a place where 3% is not the right number, we can certainly right size it. Good, good point. Okay. And uh, number 14. Okay. And number 15. Okay. If there are no other questions, then uh, at this time, the chair will entertain a motion. So move is your second. Okay. And I believe how we're gonna do this is a roll call vote. I, think that'd be I believe that's how we get done. Okay. Representative Bentley? Yes. Representative Bernal? Yes. Representative Carpenter? Yes. Yes. Representative Clark? Yes. Representative Dempsey? Yes. Representative Dreyer? Yes. Representative Dubnik? Yes. Representative Holland? Yes. Representative Kausch? Yes. Representative Mathiak? Yes. Representative Park? Yes. Representative Perkle? Yes. Representative Washburn? Yes. Representative Wiedemer? Close enough. Yes. <laughs> Representative Williams? Yes. Did I miss anyone? Representative Earhart? Yes. Chairman Martin? Uh, yes, if I can do that. <laughs> I guess I'm not chairing the point meeting at this point. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, I believe this uh, motion, having received the requisite number, uh, does pass. Thank you very much. And I will relinquish this chair to the very capable chairman. Thank you. I appreciate everybody on the committee. And we, we now know that uh, the chair doesn't get any kind of a break. So he gets, uh, the chair gets questions for bills they present just like everybody else, right? Um, now, I, th I thank everybody for doing that. Again, want to remind, uh, uh, the committee that we do have a number of bills coming up. We, we will communicate those to you electronically. We're waiting on some physical notes uh, 
for several, but we will probably have uh, bills for hearing at least and perhaps action next Wednesday uh, at one o'clock. We do not know as we sit today if we will be in session. Uh, I, I suspect we will, uh, but we only, we only have a calendar through the 8th. But the, the intention would be to meet at 1 o'clock next Wednesday, even if for some reason we do not. Uh, if, and if we're not at the Capitol, we will do a hybrid meeting again. If we're not in session, we'll do a hybrid meeting uh, just like this. Uh, but with that, let me look at the, uh, to my left, uh, Sarah. Have I missed anything this afternoon? Okay, then I'm, I'm good. We, we have nothing else before the committee. And, and uh, does anyone have anything for the good of the order of the committee? Uh, not recognized for that purpose at this time. However, we will stand adjourned without objection. Without objection, we are adjourned.